Okay. My vulnerable machine today is Moria vulnerable machine. As you can see here, I have downloaded the vulnerable machine from the website and I will put the download link in the description of the video after getting it done. So first and first, I will show you the main steps to get root on the vulnerable machine. Uh, as you can see here, I have got root and I will open my notepad or text editor here to show you the main steps that I have accomplished or that I have gone through in order to have this vulnerable machine rooted. So first, think first. Let me scan the vulnerable machine for you with a new terminal. If you scan it using aggressive scan and OS detection, Okay, now you will find there, <coughs> there are three kind of open protocols, FTP, SSH, and HTTP. If you try to find whether the, uh, the associated version of every service running on the vulnerable machine is vulnerable or not, you will find there are both the VSFTP and OpenSSH are not vulnerable to any kind of or meaning that they are not outdated and the Apache web service is kind of outdated but I haven't found any kind of exploit in the exploit database so I went ahead and opened the main website okay So we'll find a picture here and if you try to use a page source for the web page you will find nothing and the picture here has no uh, hidden strings nor any exif data so the only option here is using directory brute force and I will not uh, use it right now because I have done this step before I will show you how to do it and which word list to select basically you will you will select the word list big the text okay and you will lose this command in order to extract the relevant directories on the web server you will find this directory here okay if we go to this directory We will find some kind of message. Be quiet, the parlock will hear you. If you if we reload the page, we will get different contents. Here we have knock knock, um, indicating that there might be some kind of port knocking on the vulnerable machine. If we reload, reload, refresh, every time we get new content, new random strings. So as we said there might be some kind of port knocking you'll see here so i went ahead and but there is no any kind of possible indication on the web page any there is no uh, any kind of port numbers that you might see uh, and cause and you might depend on them to construct port knocking or ports or a sequence of ports so i will so i Minimize, let's minimize the window here and go back to our notes. As we saw, here we have some kind of names, Ori and name.
you see so those names might be a word list so I wrote down those names here on my notes and made a word list I will show you the word list here this is the word list I made based on the output based on the different output I get every time I reload the page now if I go to uh, the FTP servers here let's try to, to brute force the, or first let's connect with FTP servers you will see that the username is parlog okay and we got a new we got a word list from the from the uh, from loading the page every time so if we use this word list with the username um, Unfortunately, unfortunately, there will be no successful uh, login to the FTP server because none of the words we have collected from the web page uh, is the actual password for the FTP login. Okay, so as we saw earlier, there there might be some kind of port knocking. How we can know, how we can find out the sequence of ports and we have and we don't have any kind of indication that there might be a port sequence so I thought that there might be some kind of incoming connections from the vulnerable machine Moria here meaning that the vulnerable machine here Moria is trying to connect with my vulnerable machine and I have to listen to this uh, incoming connections how we can accomplish that by doing TCB dump listening for the incoming connections to our vulnerable machine and how to do that is basically I have done that here I will show you the command I have used and I will show you how, how I collected the port sequence so here we go TCB dump okay and I, I put the destination to be my vulnerable machine this is my, this is the IP of my vulnerable machine I have to listen for the incoming connections that might be coming to my vulnerable machine okay and my interface is Ethernet 0 so here you can see the connections that is coming to my vulnerable machine one of them is this sequence of packets here this is the IP address of the vulnerable machine Moria and as you can see it's trying to connect to my vulnerable machine on those ports 77, 101, 108, 108, 111, 110, 54, 57 and then we got nothing okay so here is the incoming connections that come from the vulnerable machine on those ports so on my notes I wrote down here that those ports might be the sequence of ports I need to knock on the vulnerable machine or in order to open some service so let's go here let me close this okay and knock on the vulnerable machine using the ports let me copy this The IP of the vulnerable machine is hold on, okay. And if we paste, move the comma. Okay, here is the se the sequence I need to write here in order to knock on the vulnerable machine. 
So knock. Now I need to scan the vulnerable machine again using nmap to see if there is any possible port that might have opened. So nmap. okay now you'll see that there is no change other than those two filtered ports 989-990 FTPS FTPS data so it's kind of secure FTP um, no it's not secure FTP sorry but it's kind of filtered ports so I haven't accomplished anything from knocking the vulnerable machine so I need to go back and think of something else so I contacted the owner of the vulnerable machine and they hinted about something to convert from ASCII to decimal or decimal to ASCII so I went and converted every every port number into ASCII so 77 is, uh, 77 is M and so on so we'll convert those kind of those port sequence into ASCII code you will get melon 69 you can accomplish this by going to Google for example and type online decimal okay uh, No, it's not binary. Okay, now if I type here 77, I will get M here. If I type 108, I will get 1. If I type I will get oh etc. So you will you will convert every port number into an ASCII character to get melon sixty nine. What does that mean? Is let's go and try to log into the FTP service. The username is Parlog, and the password is. So the login is successful. So let's see the current working directory is present. If we list the files, so we have those three files. If we go to home directory, it's try failed. Okay, again, we are in prison here. Okay, CD home. Fail to change directory. So the problem here is that I cannot change my directory to home. Let's try root. Let's 
let's try Okay, nothing here. Var. Okay, see the HTML, which is the directory uh, uh, in which the website lies. Minus A. Okay, so here I have the website files. Okay, and one of them is this string. So if I copy this and go here, I will get username and password hashes. Okay, so every username has a password hash, has a corresponding password hash. So let's use the page source to get more information about this. So here we have every username and its own MD5 hash apparently. Scroll down here, I will get those kinds of salts and the actual algorithm that's used to hash the password. So it's like MD5 password salt. So I don't need to tell you that you need to get those usernames and password hashes into a file and try to join the ripper them. So let's go back. So go back to my notes. So here is FTP password it's successful directory we got we got the directory and here user and password we need to crack the passwords that we got from the web page so I have constructed here the user hashes the text okay which has the username and password hashes we got from the web page and don't forget to put the salt here I have the hash okay. And I have the salt. Okay, don't forget to put that. And otherwise, John Derper will not help you in cracking the passwords. So let's quit. John. And let's see the for. I need to have uh, to type the format of the uh, MD5. So let's list these formats here. Okay, so the one I need is this one. So I have the MD5 of the password, salt, which is dynamic 6. Okay, now John format equal. Okay, and I will write the path to my file which is which I don't because it's I am already on the desktop let's write the file name and begin um, maybe because I have done this step before so I need to show the last correct passwords I need to clear the cache. There is no command to clear the cache for John Draper, I think. Um, okay. So let's. Uh, where's the command? 
Okay. So what I need here, so it's the file it has here, I think it's have the same. So let me copy those here from this file. And put them here, save. And instead of this file, I will use Okay. What's the problem now? Let's make sure we have every salt here. Okay, I don't think I have a problem, but no password hash left to crack, so it might pressing the output to be hidden from the screen. I don't know. I need to clear the cache for. I couldn't remember the command basically so apparently Let's try to restore the last session I have done. Or let me see if I can. If I remove this, for example. Oops. I can't know what's the problem right now. Maybe if I determined Well, maybe I forgot the command used to show the current cache of the John. And when I try to see the current cracked passwords, it shows me nothing for a reason that I couldn't figure out. Let me see if I can, how can I clear the cache of
so I, I, I might need to create a new session Okay, and about the case, nope, okay. Okay, let's try to have a new session name. So here is my command, I just need to create a new session. On new the same how can I click the cache let's see this page here So it suggests that we need to move the file to a new location, but let me have the last chart. But this time, I will type here show. Okay. Now here, uh, because I have run this session uh, before, uh, and I have cracked the password here, I have. Uh, type show to see the current uh, session or cracked password in the previous sessions so I have here every username and the cracked passwords so the main uh, thing here is I forgot to add formats into uh, in the show command in order to let John the record that I need to view the previously cracked password okay so whenever you try to show the um, previously cracked password use the show command and don't forget to type the format again which I forgot to type previously as you can see here I forgot to type the format okay so I have the username every username and its own password so if you try to use the username and the password everyone those password, usernames and passwords to log into SSH and FTP, none of them will work except the username Ari and the password Spanky. So if I go ahead and SSH Ari2, okay, the password is, and we are in. So next thing is to try to get root access or try to get root privilege on the machine. Let's see the current working directory right now. Home Ari. Let's see the files. So cat poem. And here is a message from the owner. If I go to home. Permission denied. Well, let's go back to Ari sudo minus L attack L to try to escalate my privilege. Sorry, user Ari may not run sudo on Moria. So cd Ari.
So I have here SSH. Let's go ahead. Hmm. So I have ID RSA, the private key, okay, and the public key and the known hosts. So let's see the content of the private key. So here is the private key used in order to log into the SSH server. So this private key here I have I have pulled this private key into my desktop here and I will show you that if you try to log in using this private key you will not be allowed for a simple reason that the uh, on my IP address my attacking machine IP address is not listed in the known hosts so let's see that in action the past private key is ID RSA and root at as you can see it asks for the password if my vulnerable machine IP address was in the known hosts in the SSH server or the vulnerable machine it would not ask me for the password but here I could not log in basically version denied so here let's see the content of the known hosts so here I have the IP of the vulnerable machine and the local IP address and if that indicates to something or means something it means that I can log in to the SSH server in root privilege locally how this happens basically let's use the, IP, the private key and type root and instead we will type the local IP address because it's listed as a known host so here it should not ask me um, about the password of root user so let's go ahead and enter and we are root oh okay sorry root okay and it's done